What's good, y'all, and welcome back to a brand new My Hero Academia Ultra Rumble video. Yeah, I wasn't really planning on making any more content around this game after I streamed the beta, played it for a lot, played it for a bit, got the footage, posted that uh, game I did, or I actually won my first game. Now, but no, like, when I was reviewing the footage, I'm like, I'm 9% certain I was just facing bots. Because <laughs> I didn't even know the game even had bots. I was watching some other videos about it. Uh, Gloku mentioning about the bots. And I, when I was going into editing the footage, I'm like, I'm pretty sure I was just fighting bots the entire time and I didn't even notice. <laughs> but um, regardless of that, to my, of that such man, uh, after playing the beta, I started recently, like yesterday as well as today. I've been watching a lot of videos on Ultra Rumble, just watching games of it, seeing you know, people getting like all bad, getting a bunch of kills and everything with different characters. And with all the videos I was seeing and more, it kind of made me want to play the game some more. But because, you know, the beta's over, I can't. So I decided, fuck it. Why don't I make a video about a character witch list or characters I think will be in the game at launch versus what we'll see as DLC or post launch I should say. If I ever say post launch or DLC I mean the same thing because I'm pretty sure I don't think they're going to be locking off characters as DLC. They'll probably have them, have them all show up via the gacha system and you either have to unlock the tickets that we see in the beta to unlock these new characters or you have to actually unlock them inside from the gacha system. We will have to wait and see on that. We'll see how that gets handled once the full game goes on how the gacha system will be handled how will it be will it be just that will you know just see how that is in, in comparison because obviously you know this can be free to play they obviously that's obviously have to make their money uh some way so yeah now first before we jump right into the actual characters i want to i want to talk about that i think will be in the game uh at launch versus uh versus that'll be post launch content because i think it's safe to say that we'll probably get more characters once the game fully comes out because i feel like the roster is probably a bit too small for them to really get a lot of good uh, to get some longevity at this game at the start of the roster so small especially when you can only fight in usj hopefully we do eventually see some other maps that would be cool as well but we'll have to wait and see on that but i do think we'll probably have a much bigger roster once the game finally comes out uh at launch i don't think it'll be as big and launch the same size as the roster we see in one's justice 2 but i think eventually every character that was in one justice 2 will make an appearance in uh ultra rumble so long as the game is successful because i'm pretty sure Sure, they reuse a lot of character models and just animations from Once Justice 2 into Ultra Rumble. I could be wrong now, but I know some a lot of similar animations. I'm pretty sure Shigaraki's model is ripped right from that game. Now, there's three things I want. There's two, a couple things I want to talk about before we jump right in with that. And that's three things that have happened. Read three characters, or rather three. Um, adjustments that have happened to three characters uh, that has happened since season six because if you guys of course have been up to date with the anime shit's been crazy with the anime and a lot of shit's gone down with the war arc as well as the black hero arc. and the three characters i want to talk about that i know a lot of people discussing whether or not they'll be cosmetics or be their own separate characters is white hair todoroki or white or white hair dobby excuse me or toya i guess you could say awaken shigaraki and dark deck now i will say this right now White, White, Dobby, Toya, whatever you want to call him, he will be a cosmetic. There is not enough changes that have happened to him, at least where the anime is currently. Nothing really has much have changed with Toto with Dobby at this point that I'm pretty sure they will just make his white hair version he has in the anime currently as just a as just a cosmetic. Now, the next two characters that you can definitely make an argument for both being cosmetics or uh, their own separate characters, Awakened Shigaraki and Dark Deku, you can make an argument for either of these two. Personally, first of all, if any of these two end up becoming their own individual characters away from the uh, Shigaraki and the, and the Izuku we have currently in, uh, that was in the beta, they will be, they, you won't see them at launch. They will definitely be post launch characters, especially Dark Deku. I don't know how you would even begin to balance Izuku with all the new quirks he has now, you know, and everything. How the, how you would even begin to balance that to not make him super OP in the game where he has the smoke screen, flight, you know, dark web, uh, fucking um Fajin, you know and all that shit i don't even know how you would even begin to balance that and make it work where he isn't broken so if he is going to be his own separate character it's definitely going to be post-launch but i also given how you know insane izuku is now at home and low and how many powers he has now there's a good chance they might just be like nah fuck this we'll just make him a cop we'll just make a cosmetic like he is in one's justice too you could, that, that could definitely see the same thing with, with, with Awakened Shigaraki. He's gotten a lot more powerful. I don't think it would be as hard to balance 
surrounds him as it would be for Dark Deku because he doesn't have nearly as many quirks. But I could definitely see them making him just a cosmetic like he is in, two, in One's Justice 2 or making him his own separate character post-launch. We'll have to wait and see on that, but that's what I think about those three guys. One of Dob, Tar, uh, White Hair Dob will definitely be a deal, will definitely be a cosmetic. While Awakened Shigaraki and Dark Deku, you could definitely make an argument for either or. Personally, I think they'll probably lean more to making just more making them just cosmetics than rather than make them their own separate characters, but they could definitely easily do that. And there's definitely been enough variance between him and their standard versions uh, that they could do that. But we'll have to wait and see on that. Now, onto the actual characters I think will make an appearance that, will, that we will see uh, at, at launch for the game versus what we will see as post launch content. First of all, I think by the time the game fully comes out, most of Class A will be playable. Uh, I don't I don't think we'll see everyone, but I think at the very least we'll probably see Momo playable. Jiro will definitely be playable. Um, probably Tokoyami as well will probably be playable as well. Kirishima as well, and probably also Mina. We will probably see everyone. Maybe we, I don't, uh, maybe we might see a couple of them might come out later, but I wouldn't be surprised if we at least get a couple of those as, at, at launch. Uh, given the fact we do have All Might in the game, as well as Mount Lady, I think it's fair to say that we will also see Endeavor as playable at launch, as well as Ayazawa, and as well as Mina. I think all three of them will be playable at launch. Mirko will definitely be playable at launch, hands down. There's no way with her showing in Season 6 that they're not going to include her at launch, so she will definitely be a launch character. Another group of characters I think will also be playable at launch will probably be the big three as well. Uh, Toto, uh, Miri, uh, Mirio, uh, Nejire, and Tamaki. I think all three of them will be playable at launch. If not, they might be, they'll probably be some of the first characters you'll see as post-launch characters uh, coming in there. I'm very curious about what they will do with Mirio because of course with his quirk and how he's able to like face through objects and everything, I'm very curious how they will balance that and how they would make that work because that would be really cool, man. I would definitely love to see how they would handle Mirio in this sort of battle royale scene and how they would use his quirk and how that would work in the game. And that one I'm definitely curious about, but I definitely think we will see the big three in this game in at launch. Given the fact we have Kendo as playable in the game and the beta, there's a good chance we might also see um, Monoma. He might be playable, or the very least Tetsu Tetsu. I think we can, might see some class be represented. Shinso might also be playable at launch, but I can also see them making Shinso DLC or uh, post launch content um, definitely with him but I don't see them put, making them available at launch but if I had to guess I would definitely say Shinzo would probably be more post launch content so yeah I would definitely think that would give we'll give a she's in there we'll probably also see some more uh, class B representation of the game on the roster at launch with with either Monoma or Tetsu Tetsu or both alongside of Tendo uh, as far as the league and, uh, and the villains, I think I definitely think we'll probably all for one. He's definitely playable. You can't have all might in the game and not have all for one in there. He has to be in there definitely at launch. There's no way they're not gonna do him. Uh, muscular as well might make an appearance as well. And I think we might also see Stain be as maybe also be seeing him at launch, but I could also see them making him post launch as well. I also think Cami as well as um, as Inyasa, I think both of them will be coming at launch as well. I think we will also see uh, them as launch. Or like I said, those will be like some of the early here we see as post launch characters. But I definitely think we will definitely see um, Cami and Yasa definitely playable at, at launch when the game comes out. So that's about all the characters I think that will be available at launch. Now let's, now let's get a little now let's get a little creative and see who we can think seeing as post launch characters. Uh, Overhaul, I, I can definitely see him being a post launch character. Lady Nagan, she will definitely be a post launch character. Maybe around say maybe also tied tied in with overhaul because of course it would happen in the black hero arc and everything i wouldn't be surprised if they, if they tie those two together but yeah i would definitely like to see mount i would definitely love to see lady nagant in the game and just with her with her quirk with the good with her like gun arm thing that would definitely be cool and then of course you know with that little like flow quirk she has as well there's definitely that she could definitely be like a menace and loki could be kind of broken in the game if they don't balance her correctly so yeah, I definitely think she'll be a Pokemon character, and I would just love to see Lady Nagant in the game. And maybe also maybe make one of her alternate costumes, her original manga design, where she doesn't have the leggings. Uh, that would also be sick as well. Speaking of another cosmetic, another thing I would love to see as a cosmetic, or what I hope to see as cosmetic, and I think these will be uh, will be available as cosmetics once the game comes out, is is Bakugo's winter outfit as well as Uraraka's new outfit she has currently in the game. I don't know why they're not already available in the game, or at least Uraraka isn't. You know, it seems like where the game starts off, they basically just cut it off right at like 
season, right at the end of season four, if not like the uh, the U.S. at the Class A versus Class B arc. It seems like that's where, right where they cut it off, but they just don't give Bakugo's winter outfit. Now, I don't know if they would, now you could, there was already a bunch of unlockable cosmetics you can get via the gacha system already. Um, like, I already, I, like I was able to unlock Izuku's season two outfit, but I've also seen gameplay of his season three outfit. There's also his fantasy costumes as well for basically all the characters. They have their fantasy costumes, and there as well as them in their usual uh, USJ um, UA gym clothes, as well as just them in their uni in their in their uniforms. But I also saw that actually Toga has her MVA outfit as well, which does make me wonder if Bakugo and, and Uraraka's new outfits are available for via the God system, and just I haven't been able to see any gameplay of them actually unlocking them, or they just weren't included. They just gave Toga her MVA post uh, post season five outfit. We'll have to wait and see on that, but yeah, interesting they did at least give Toga her NBA outfit. So, I do think we'll definitely see Bakugo and Uraraka's new outfits, or current outfits in the anime, as well as Bakugo's winter outfit is available uh, once the game actually comes out. At least I hope so anyway, because I want to switch them to those outfits, man, because I love those outfits, man. Another thing I would love to see as a cosmetic that I would hope to God we do see as a cosmetic is Shigaraki's outfit, the red jacket he has in uh, Heroes Rising. That's probably like, my favorite a look of Shigaraki before before he gets before his awakening. I love that look. I love that red jacket. It sucks that basically he's only been in that movie, man, and they, they didn't keep it around for the actual show because it looks so nice. Hell, I wouldn't actually mind seeing the villain characters from the movies actually also come to the game via uh, obviously his post launch content for no other reason because just so I can hear more JYB because he voices the main villain in uh, Heroes Rising so I would love to see the movie villains come and make an appearance in there like I said for no other reason for J just so I can hear more of JYB but that's me that's just me personally I love Johnny on Bot he's one of my favorite voice actors so being able to hear him more or some more would be nice. Hawks, I could also see being post-launch. Stars and Stripes will definitely be post-launch so that they can tie that in with Season 7. They'll probably also, when they'll drop, depending on when this game releases versus when Season 7 comes out. Which, at this point, I'm 90% certain they're going to be releasing Season 7 uh, during spring of next year. Given we're already in June, and usually if they were going to drop it, if they were going to have Hero Walk Season 7 air in the fall, they probably would have announced it some by, by now, give it to the visual, a new PV or something by this point, considering how close we are starting to get to October. I'm 90% I'm certain they're now just going to, that we will be seeing Season 7 in spring of next year. That's my prediction for that. So, depending on when that drops versus when the game actually fully releases, they'll probably, they'll definitely have Stars and Stripes be post content so that they could like tie it in with that. Probably also talk about we'll probably see Izuku's new outfit that he's rocking in season seven. That will probably we'll see that as well. Best genius could also I can also see being post launch as well. And uh, yeah, I think it's everybody I wanted to really major characters I could think of off the top of my head that I would like to that I could see being post launch versus when the war versus coming at the game at launch. As always, leave your thoughts below in the comments, guys. What you guys think? What are your what are some characters you want to see? What are your predictions? Who are some characters you would like to see be available in the game at launch versus maybe some characters you want to see at post launch? Keep it spoiler free for mon keep it free of manga spoilers uh, for us anime onlys, you know. <laughs> and um, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like if you did, subscribe if you're new. Follow me, my social media, if you feel like it. Link down the box below. And as always, come out for more. See you guys next time.